Hi, it's Matt from Go Green Autos. It's such a cold day today out there in the unit. It uh, hasn't got above zero degrees and it's just too cold to work on cars. So I'm staying in the office today just to uh, warm my hands up. So uh, I thought I'd make a video on portable chargers and in particular these Zen Car adjustable chargers or granny cables. So I don't normally stock the Zen Car um, charging cables. I used to years ago, um, but I've moved on to other brands since. Uh, but I had run out of stock of the Type 1 versions and I've got a vehicle going out that requires a Type 1 granny cable, so um, I had to buy in what I could. Um, so one of my other suppliers stocks these Zen car chargers, so I've got one in just for a vehicle. Um, but it's the new adjustable type, which uh, wasn't around before when I was dealing with Zen. Um, but uh, I'm quite impressed with this functionality. So I thought I'd make this video just to explain how these work and why these have an advantage over non-adjustable granny cables. So first off, let's talk about current and why you might want to adjust the current of your granny cable. So in the UK, our sockets are 13 amp. We all know them as 13 amp sockets, but that's maximum. And with a granny cable, you're plugging it in and leaving it charging for many, many hours. Six, seven, eight, ten, twelve hours, something like that. So you don't want to be drawing maximum current down your wiring and through the socket and through the pins on your plug at maximum rate for that amount of time. So UK granny cables, chargers, are limited to 10 amp and that just means that it's a little bit more gentle on your wiring, your pins, your screws and your connectors. However, there are still issues with that um, and granny cables get a bad name because some people have had fires or melted live pins on their plugs or burnt live pins on their um, sockets. Uh, and it's not necessarily a problem with the granny cable um, it's just that drawing a lot of current for a very long time through your socket will find problems that existed beforehand but you never knew about it. Um, so, you know, you, in this case I've got a, my number plate printer here, that's probably only a few amp. And if that wiring was loose at the back of the socket or the screw terminal wasn't tight, you're never going to know, it's never going to cause a problem. And maybe you could put a kettle in there and boil a kettle, that's only going to draw power for two minutes, it's not going to highlight the problem. You stick something like a granny cable on, it might only be 10 amp, it's still within spec. Um, if it was only charging for five minutes, you wouldn't see the problem. But because it's charging for 10 hours, that's when the overheating arises and it will just highlight problems that have always existed um, that you never knew about. So it's not necessarily a fault of the granny cable. The fault was there on your wiring anyway. It's just this is going to find it. So that's why granny cables are um, capped at 10 amp, just so it doesn't stress your wiring so much. And that's also why you shouldn't use extension cables because extension cables um, is going to add that additional limitation on your wiring and um, often uh, extension cables aren't 13 amp, they're often 10 amp. Um, you'll often find that the wiring on extension cables um, is only one mil cable and uh, that's going to get quite hot. Some people also don't unwind them so they've had problems there. Um, so yes, that's why you, you limit granny cables to 10 amp. A word of warning, some uh, imported, particularly Chinese granny cables, they're actually 16 amp. So even though they have a UK 13 amp plug on the end, the charger will be drawing 16 amp. And that is because they're designed to have a commando socket on the end. So you have to be very careful if you're buying a granny cable. If it says it's a 16 amp one, do not use it in the UK on a 13 amp plug they have to be 10 amp or below. And that's why these chargers have an advantage because you can reduce them below 10 amp. So I'll just mention uh, the commando sockets. Um, these commando sockets is often what um, caravanners use if you put a supply on the outside of your house. 
um, you know the the UK plugs 13 amp maximum if you want to go higher you go commando and these are 16 or 32 amp versions if you've got a 16 amp uh, granny cable you can you could have a commando socket on the end and have a dedicated uh, commando supply and charge your car at 16 amp with one of these as long as you use commando plugs and sockets and not 13 amp plugs and sockets and a 13 amp ring main you need a dedicated 16 or 32 amp supply so this zen cable uh, is a 10 meter version and um, it has a connecting block here so we have a few meters of 13 amp flex with a 13 amp plug on the end and the reason why it's got a connecting block is you, you can put different plugs on the end and indeed you can have one with a commando socket if you want to crank this up to 16 amp and charge on a dedicated commando plug supply. So let's have a look at this Zen charger. Let's just plug it in here. And we can see these have a little screen on there and they show you the current amperage. And here we've got an RFID card reader and with the unit you get two RFID cards so what you can do is you can put that on there and it adjusts the settings of the charger so now it's 8 amp now it's 10 amp now it is 12 amp now 16 amp and now back to 6 amp so these are the only adjustable chargers I have seen and these have a huge advantage. So why would you want to drop your current down from 10 amp? Well, maybe you're using the extension lead. Generally, um, the message is do not use extension leads with portable chargers. That's because most extension leads that you can buy in the UK aren't actually proper 13 amp extension leads, they're 10 amp. And also people don't unwind extension leads and probably use excessively long extension leads for charging and uh, it's adding additional stress on that cabling um, so certainly um, gen the general message is don't use extension leads but if you've got a proper um, let's say industrial grade extension lead uh, that's um, got one and a half square mil cable or more then it will support 10 amp um, but certainly if you can knock this down to six or eight amp then that's going to allow you to run your granny cable with an extension lead safely another scenario might be you've got um, older wiring you think your wiring is a bit suspect or what does happen a lot is you might be charging from a socket in your garage and it's a spur socket and whereas what i mean by a spur socket is you've only got one supplying cable into your socket rather than two and it being on a ring main it's then just a spur socket and therefore running at 10 amp for many hours pro probably isn't a good idea and therefore knocking it down to a lower ampage is going to again make all that charging a much safer process so if you've got a granny cable and you're plugging straight in to your socket and that socket is on a ring main and that wiring is sound then it's perfectly safe to draw 10 amp for many hours and charging on a granny cable is perfectly safe but in those other times where you think your wiring might be a bit suspect or it's a spur socket or you want to use an extension lead that's when you want an adjustable charger and to knock it down to 8 amp or 6 amp is going to make the whole process a lot safer it's going to stop your wiring and your plug getting warm uh, it is going to take longer to charge a car but in most cases that's not going to make a scrap of difference because it's going to be charged overnight so whether it takes um, six hours or eight hours it's not really going to make any difference because it should be normally charged by the morning anyway so that's where I think these adjustable chargers have a huge benefit it improves safety this particular one because it has um, a connector here where it can have different ends it does mean that it, it is possible to knock this up over 10 amp which isn't therefore safe with the UK plug so if you've got one of these ones with a connector in the middle 
and it will go above 10 amp so if we look at this one it will go to 12 and 16 that's when it will get unsafe because it will then try to draw 16 amp through your um, 13 amp socket and plug because obviously uh, it's getting ready well it's assuming you've got a commando socket on the end so you do have to be a bit careful that you've got to get it on the right amperage and it's got to be 10 amp or below in the UK uh, I have another version here one that doesn't have this connector and it's just hardwired with a UK plug so if I just plug that one in and we have a look here saying please swipe card so we can see there it's 10 amp I swipe it again sorry it was 8 amp and I swiped it again and it's 10 amp and I do it again it only toggles between 8 and 10 amp so this one is better in that respect because it's not going to let you go beyond 10 because it was built with um, hardwired with a UK plug but because this one has this flexibility of changing the end the unit then has to be able to go up to 16 amp to allow for the different types of connectors on the end so you just have to be a bit more careful with those um, whereas you don't with this model the other thing you have to be a bit wary with um, these is they're not fully waterproof and that's the same with all portable chargers but um, you will see there'll be many brands of chargers with this style of packaging or carcass and the grommets at the end uh, they aren't 100% waterproof so a lot of times that you might end up hanging them that way off a, a socket high up a wall and that's where you got to be careful because water might run down the cable and it will get in through that grommet you're better off having them that way so there's less chance of water getting in either end um, but ideally you don't want to be using these or leaving them outside in torrential rain or when it's really wet they're sort of splash proof but they're not 100% waterproof um, so yeah overall these type of adjustable chargers have a huge safety advantage over normal granny cables if they're used correctly um, and as I said you've just got to be a bit careful with granny cables um, that to make sure that they're not drawing any more than 10 amp through UK wiring and if you're going to use an extension lead just make sure that that extension lead is up to the job um, if you're going to buy a cheap extension lead from Argos or something then it's probably not going to be up to the job uh, a simple way to check is have a look at the size of the wiring on the end of the plug on your granny cable and if your extension lead wiring is smaller or less diameter than that then you know straight away it's not going to be up to the job but if there's any doubt consult an electrician do not risk it if you don't understand what you're doing I should also just state the obvious that using a portable charger is now not really a permanent solution for charging your EV so portable chargers are now often referred to as occasional use chargers or emergency use chargers so if you have an electric vehicle really you want to get a dedicated wall charger installed and that has a number of advantages firstly the installer will put a new feed in from your consumer unit typically a 32 amp feed now so that does away with all potential risk of using your existing home wiring and being a 32 amp wall charger then your car is going to charge quicker than using a 10 amp portable charger and obviously batteries are larger now on electric vehicles so you don't be, want to be restricted to charging your vehicle at 2.3 kilowatt when you can probably charge at 7.5 kilowatt or so but if you've got an older EV with a 16, 22 or 24 kilowatt hour battery it's likely that the charger on that car is only a 3.5 kilowatt charger anyway so if you're charging on a granny cable that can only draw uh, 2.3 kilowatt um, that's 10 amp and the car will uh, only have a 16 amp charger then it isn't uh, going to take much longer charging on a granny cable so for those older EVs then as long as the granny cable is safe then this is still a viable charging solution but any car with a 7 kilowatt AC charger on it and a bigger battery 
then yes, you definitely want to get a dedicated wall charger unit. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube. That really does help the channel and allows other people to find these videos. And maybe have a look at the back catalog on the channel. There's lots of EV related videos there and more will be coming soon.